Guys, welcome back to Normski TV. There's been a lot going on um, in the transfer world of Arsenal. Um, namely, Mr. John Stones. Yes, that Mr. John Stones who plays for Man City. Apparently, there are rumours um, that uh, Mikel, Mikel Arteta is interested in bringing John Stones to um, Arsenal. Um, in the January transfer window. Now, reading um, from the mirror, City are not too happy about this, and I know Pep Guardiola is not going to be too happy about, you know, um, us looking at um, their player. But when we look at it, John Stone's not really getting much playing time with um, Man City. Um, you've got the likes of Fernando, uh, Fern, uh, is it Fernando, Fernando, Fernandino, who. Um, is playing in that position. So he's right down the pecking order at the moment and he's still got Laporte to come back. And when he does come back, where does that leave John um, Stones? So we know the situation with Arsenal. Right now, we are very short when it comes to defenders. Um, what, what, will, what will he be going for? Who knows? I mean, he was one of the most expensive defenders um, before... Um, uh, Virgil van Dijk went to Liverpool and I think he went to Man I think he went to Man City for I've been 55 million plus if I'm not mistaken. So um you know you know I know um from their uh, previous um meetings um we got Sorry, Mikel Arteta um and uh John Stones are well acquainted with each other and get on very well. And they've developed quite a close relationship whilst because Mikel Arteta was at Man City. Um, so, can this happen? I mean, would he be a good fit? Um, I, I know um, Ray Parler seemed to think, he was talking about it on TalkSport today, that he would be a good fit to um, play alongside um, Socrates, or even possibly David Luiz. Um, and he's obviously a much better defender than um, Holding. Um, you know, there there have been a couple of you know he's had a couple of injuries at um, Man City, so that's kept him out. And there have been the odd occasion where because he, he's a guy that can definitely he's definitely a ball playing um, defender. But there have been a couple of incidents where or instances where he's um, overplayed and lost the ball. And I know he hasn't been he hasn't been the best at Arsenal. He hasn't, he hasn't been the best for Arsenal when um, we've been playing at the back. So. I don't know how the two will work together, but you know what? What I'm saying here right now is that we are short of defenders. We need a defender in. At the moment, it doesn't look like that Arsenal are going to spend. It, it, it's looking like a loan deal. Could we possibly get him on loan until the end of the season? Will Man City be happy for him to um, come to us for those uh, last um, five, six months or so? What do you think? Leave it in the comments. Um, do you think we should go for John Stones? Um, and if we can, get him on loan because I don't think we're going to have the money to to, to, to buy him now. So I, I would think um, if we could get him on loan, that would be great to the end of the season. We've talked about Jerome Boateng, um, who um, is who surplus the requirements for Bayern Munich. 31 years old got much experience might not have the legs not the experience of playing in the Premier League but we definitely need a defender 100% so guys um, think about it and put it in the comments do you think we should go for John Stone should we get him try and get him on loan or would you go for Jerome Boateng um, who would probably be if we was to buy him which I don't want to buy him but if we were, he'd probably cost a lot less I think the quoted price is about 12 and a half million but his wages 196,000. I don't know what John Stone's wages are, but we definitely, definitely need a central um, defender because we are short on numbers. Callum Chambers is out. We've only got Socrates, David Luiz, and um, Holding, who's coming back from a long term injury. Right, um, let's move on. Um, there's a lot of talk around um, 
um, Lacazette, I was just watching uh, Sky Sports and they were saying that um, there's a possibility that um, uh, there could be a swap deal between uh, Alexander Lacazette and Thomas Lamar. Now, um, Athletic, the Atletico chief, um, I think what's happening is that they're trying to do a deal for um, Edison Cavani, who plays for PSG, and apparently um, they, they've got representatives that, that have gone over to Paris to try and broker a deal. Now, they're saying that if that falls through, if that falls through, that the second choice would be um, to go for Alexander Lacazette. But that would mean that um, um, if, if, we, if, we, if, if we go for him, I think um, Atletico Madrid are saying that they would look to um, make, uh, make um, Lamar a part of the deal or to, to do a swap deal. Um, what do you think? Do you think we should do a swap deal? Do you think um, that uh, Lamar could cut it in the, the Premier League? He hasn't really done too well for um, um, Atletico Madrid. He hasn't really, you know, he's only scored, what, three goals. You know, he was purchased for 52.7 mil from Monaco. Played well for them when they won the league. And now he's just looking a shadow of himself. Would we take that chance? Lacazette, he knows the Premier League. The only problem with Lacazette is that at the moment, you know, there's, there's something that doesn't seem quite right. Um, he's not playing the way we knew Lacazette when he first came to the club. Not banging in the goals at the moment. Um, and we really do definitely need him to start banging the goals. As you know, um, Pierre Bamiang is out for three games. And so Lacazette has to step up to the plate. Would you swap Thomas Lamar with um, Lacazette? And then saying all of that, um, there's talk of... Um, Thomas Lamar even going to Wolves. So, you know, will this happen? Will this happen that um, we'll be able to do a swap deal? Will we get Thomas Lamar? Because he's linked um, heavily with Wolves. So, it, again, we can just, um, just, just watch this space and, you know, see, you know, what happens. I mean, at the moment, um, it's looking like for Arsenal at the moment, things just seem to be really, really quiet um, on the home front when it, it, comes, it comes to incoming... Um, players, um, it is looking that we're going to have to go for um, loan deals and just hoping that we first and foremost get a defender in. We may even need to be looking at a, a, a defensive midfielder um, as well um, with the um, Lucas Torreira possibly being out maybe for a few weeks. I'm hoping, I haven't heard no news and, and, and in terms of his condition, but I'm hoping he will fit rearing to go for the Sheffield United game but at the moment we're picking up injuries left right and centre and we're falling short in a lot of those those particular departments so we really need to be getting that sorted out um, so um, just going over um, would you take um, Thomas Lamar as a swap deal for Alexander Lacazette um, and if so do you think he could do a job for us um, you know what we could what could possibly happen is that he could play on the left um, you've got Martinelli um, oh sorry play on the so yeah you could play on the left um, Pepe playing on the right and with um, a Bamiyang playing down the middle so that means if we leave if we lose Lacazette then we've got like a player like um, Martinelli who can come in who can actually play out left or actually play down the middle he's done it few times for us um, for the Europa and some of the cup games and he's done really well scored quite a few goals so you know um, we're gonna have to just see and see how this all pans out but the news is that um, Atletico Madrid are iron Lacazette if the deal fails with um, the PSG um, um, Cavani it's a Cavani um, and then you've got the John Stones um, situation could we get him? And if we do get him, would he be a good fit um, for Arsenal? He's a, he's a ball-playing um, defender um, and so Arteta knows him very well. But will Man City let go of him? That is the, the problem. And I think in looking at it, I don't think they are going to let go because, uh, you know, they are, they are playing still in a lot of competitions. Um, and Laporte, I don't know how far he's away. I know he's gone back and started training. So, you know, he, he, he will be back soon. But they're going to need all the defenders that they can um, for their, you know, for their push for, uh, you know, a couple of those titles. 
Um, so for Arsenal, we got to make sure we get something done and done as soon as possible. Um, the other thing um, was interesting, um, which I saw was in the news, is Arsenal um, falling, falling down the, the money pecking order. Um, I believe um, that we've um, dropped down to, I think it's 11th, um, and Tottenham now are ahead of us in terms of um, the money league. Um, now, you know, that's purely down to the fact that um, we're not in Champions League. We haven't been in there for two seasons. And, um, you know, it, it's unlikely that we're going we're gonna to get in there um, this season, um, make top four. And the only way we can do that is through the Europa League. So, so if we are to get back up there, I mean, we're only going back a few years. So I think in 2010, the Money League table, we were fifth richest club um, in the world. Uh, I think Chelsea were in six, and then you had um, Tottenham who were lying that's in 15th place. Now they're like now they're ninth. They're above us. So it shows that the money that they're making from the, the the stadium, the fact that they've been in Champions League three, four years in a row now. So you can see that us missing out on Champions League is massive, and we need to get back into Champions League and get back up the that 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 money league. Um, you know, I spoke about. Um, the uh, Dan Gotti, um, the, the, the richest African um, man in the, the world, and he was looking about trying to purchase um, Arsenal um, in 2021. I hope that the rooms are true, and he's been saying it for the last how many years that he wants to buy Arsenal, but he's obviously got other projects that he needs to finish. I'm hoping and praying that it is true, um, and that um, he will in 2021, because that's where realistically when he will finish his projects, that he will be able to go to Stan Kroenke and say, "Here, mate, here's two, three billion. Um, give, 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 give me the club." Because right now we we are not doing anything. Um, under Stan Kroenke, um, under Stan Kroenke, we have regressed both on the field and off the field, and so therefore we need someone that's going to put the money where their mouth is and and start you know, putting resources back into the club, buying really decent players. But for that to happen, in Arteta we trust. He's the one that's going to need to get us back up that table. If we can, by some miracle, get into the top four, there's still about 17 games to go. Um, we just hope we can go on a run um, and try and see if we can get ourselves back up the table. But if not, then let's push for, look, I'll put our eggs in one basket, let's push for Europa and hopefully see if we can go down that road and, and try and get into um, Europe that way. Listen, if you like what I'm doing, please like, share, subscribe, and please leave your comments and leave any tips in terms of how I can improve this channel. But listen, um, thanks for listening um, to Daily Transfer, and I hope to bring some more news tomorrow. Peace out.